has really been different since Jesus came into my heart. Lord, I wouldn't take nothing for some Jesus. We'd like to welcome you all to the Mount Pleasant Primitive Baptist Church Our service located at 3120 29th Avenue, North Birmingham, Alabama. We're so happy to see all of you all today. God has been mighty good to all of us. We are so blessed to have with us today of the honor from the New Jerusalem Primitive Baptist Church in Bethlehem, and we welcome his church family with us today. We are so grateful to have you all, and we just glad to be a part of the meeting. God has been mighty good to us. Sister Blair has some announcements that she's going to make, and then we will further proceed in our services. Sister Blair, this the boss, y'all. This the boss, so y'all pay attention. I had one announcement. I had one announcement. And asking our pastor to Elder Hunter, Minister Hunter, and to our guests and all our members, good morning. As I said before, I had only one announcement. Angel uh, texted me last night to do an announcement. Now I have a whole page, another page. Okay, uh, first of all, we, we're still praying for our church members on the loss of their families, uh, the Drake family and the William family. And we also praying for Brother Gerald Lee. Uh, his wife passed. We are, we are praying for him because uh, it was unexpected. And uh, I know it's hard. And Sister Jessica Lovin asked to be added to the prayer list this morning. And she had a procedure done. We also have Sister Janetta Irvin. She's recuperating from her eye surgery. We have Dr. Olivia Bond. She had heart surgery on Thursday. She's doing well. And uh, Sister Janie called me a few minutes ago and said they are taking Glenda to the hospital. So we are waiting to hear how she is. But we are glad to see Samuel morning doing so well. You know he's feeling good. He's been all over the church. You know he's doing well. But we're still praying for him, and he, we are praying for Mother Morning, you know, because she have to, you know, take care of Samuel. Okay, we have a, we're going to have a union meeting that will be August the 4th through, and the 5th, and it's going to be at St. Paul in Lauderdale, Mississippi. And if you plan to attend, please see Mother Crawford, because she needs to make uh, room reservation for you. Okay, this is the announcement I was supposed to make. <laughs> this is an announcement on behalf of Sister Angel Johnson. Greetings and good morning, Mount Pleasant. That's how she got it. Are you guys excited about what the youth have in store for you in August? I'm not there in person, but I need to see some excitement on the live stream. <laughs> Can I get a drum roll, please? <laughs> Sister Rosna Crawford, Sister Alicia Cara, and Sister Angel Johnson are planning a jam-packed weekend for the youth by the youth. This weekend will include a back-to-school concert on Saturday, August the 12th, 2023, and a youth day program on Sunday, August the 13th, 2023. Both events will take place here at Mount Pleasant Primitive Baptist Church. And you don't want to miss the blessing that will be in the building that weekend. So our theme is connected, plugged into God's power. This theme highlights the importance of being connected to the power source which is God himself. It encourages young people to prioritize their relationship with God through prayer, worship, and consistent engagement with his word, experiencing his power in their lives. Our strip is coming from Philippians 419, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. This verse reminds young people that God is the source of all their needs. By staying connected to him, they can trust that he will provide for them abundantly. We hope to see you, your mama and them, 
your dad and them, Lil Ray Ray and them, and most importantly, the you. What we need for you, get out your pens or iPads and write this down. We need you to participate, paint. <laughs> Please reach out to Sister Alicia Carroll or Sister Angela Johnson if you would like to sing, dance, read a poem or whatever. We're accepting all performances. We want your talent to shine through for Christ. We need Mount Pleasant, number two, we need Mount Pleasant members, family and friends to donate school supplies. This is to ensure that our youth are equipped what they need to start, start the school year off right. Donated school, school supplies will be distributed Sunday after Surrey. We need you to spread the word. Our goal is to encourage young people to deepen their connection with God. We are amped about getting your youth reinvigorated re about Christ. These events invites are extended beyond our four walls. Let's get out in the community and bring our youth back to the church. Be on the lookout for upcoming flyers, videos, and social media posts where additional detail will be provided. But before I take my seat, say it with me. I am excited. I am excited. And I will show up to support our youth on August the 12th and 13th. And I will show up to support our youth and I will spread the word and help bring our youth back. And I will spread the word and help bring our youth back. Okay, so remember back to school concert, uh, Saturday, August the 12th, 2023, from 12 to 3, Youth Day program, Sunday, August the 13th, 2023, at 11 o'clock. The Youth Ministry of Mount Pleasant, Primitive Baptist Church invites you to an incredible weekend planned for the youth, for the youth. Experience uplift music, powerful messages, and a time of fellowship with life-minded individuals. Don't miss out on the blessing that await. Bring your family and friend, including Lil Ray Ray and them, and let's celebrate together. We can't wait to see you. <laughs> for, for more information, contact Angel Johnson at 225-955-2617. We thank Sister Blair for doing what NGL asked her to do. We thank you so much. Uh, we also had asked, uh, our, the pastor asked the membership to bring donations today. We are to hydrate uh, Carver High School's band. They asked us for water and Kate aid uh, and if you didn't bring that just just make sure book Curtis have your donation for you Lee here today and we'll be sure to uh, be able to supply the band with the necessary liquids that they need to uh, get in shape for the season so at this time we're going to uh, Genoa to, to bring another selection and the next voice you hear will be Elder Hunter from the New Jerusalem Primitive Baptist Church Bessma, Alabama. Thank you.
tried to do that. <laughs> you were just talking about me back there in that chair back there. <laughs> this is the way. When I think about it. Come on, somebody. Y'all help me today. The goodness of Jesus Christ. When, when I think about, when I just think about, I don't, I don't have to do anything else but just think about. I don't have to be at church. I don't have to be knowing. When I think about the goodness of God and all that he has done for me, I don't know about y'all. Yes, sir. My soul cries out. He didn't say I run around and I shout on physically. He said, my soul on the inside, it cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to praise you. That's all I want to do. I just want to praise you. Your holy name. That song said, when I think about the goodness, it said, amazing grace. The goodness of God, the amazing grace. I told somebody the other day, the amazing grace will always be, I don't know about y'all, my song of praise. For it was that grace that set me free, that bought my liberty. I don't know why he loved me so. I know some of us can say the same thing. I do not know why he came to love me so. Come on, Brother Gilmore. He looked beyond what? All of my faults. All of my sins. He looked beyond all of the things I've done in the past, the things that I'm about to do. He looked beyond all of my faults and saw my needs. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. You just want to what? Come on, somebody just join me. Let's just praise him today. Come on. Come on, Alicia. I know you can. I love. Oh, I just. I just came to tell you. Tell it, tell it. Mother Crawford, what you say? Tell it. <laughs> I love, I just want you to worship right now. Oh. Come on. Just want more oh, than I love you. I love you more than anything. Oh, come on. You ought to not sit there. You ought to worship him this morning. Come on. You ought to worship him. <laughs> so I love you. Hey, more than anything. Oh. Come on, you love him today. You ought to lift your hands today. Oh, I just want.
Somebody, come on. I want to feel it. The Spirit of God is in this place. Huh? Oh! Yeah, come on. I love you, Jesus. I worship you. Just want. Yeah. That I love more. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Come on. That's, I don't know why he came to love me so. I do not know. <laughs> and he hung his head and did he died for you and me for you and me for me and you oh but that's not how the story is Woo! thank you Jesus hey. yes sir Lord oh Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, but that's not how a story is. I love you. Oh, I just want to worship. God, God, God. Come to me now in the name of Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name this morning. I, I, I just came to tell somebody. Uh, Curtis, that song that I came to tell you. I came to tell you what, what, what Jesus said. I didn't come to tell you what I said. Because I don't know anything. Apart from him, I don't know anything no more. I thought I knew one time, but I found out, and when I found out I was nothing, <laughs> he was able to work with me then. <laughs> yes, sir, Lord. Giving honor to God, the most high God, the most benevolent God, the omnipresent God, giving honor to him. First, the miraculous things that he has done in our life, we give all the praises to him who is above all things. I bring you greetings from my Lord and Savior. Come on, Jesus Christ. Come on, give him a hand clap. I'm standing here before you today. Could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but it had not been for the Lord on my, oh. Mm. Where would I?
be. Thank you, Lord, for saving a wretch like me. Who shall save me from this body of death? Nobody but Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Elder Givens <clears throat> is not here. I'm standing in this place this morning. Elder Baldwin is not here as well. To Minister Leslie, who did a tremendous job on the women's conference a few weeks ago. Glad she on my side. To all the deacons, deacons, and the officers and the members of this church, to my church, New Jerusalem and Bessemer. Mother Lavender is here this morning. Deacon Lavender, thank you for coming this morning. Thank you. To all in our president, everyone that is listening to this live streaming, uh, and all the ones who will not see it but will share it later, uh, everyone that's on our Facebook page at Mount Pleasant, I bid you greetings from New Jerusalem Primitive Baptist Church. And I'm Elder Hunter, and I'm just. I'm at home. I, 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 I feel sometimes, you know, whenever you preach, I don't care what nobody says, you still have a little nervousness in you. You know, it's almost every time I'm here, it's almost like a new time. But that's a good thing because you ain't just taking advantage of the people knowing you. You put in the work like you always do. But I, I, I'm gonna hold you here a long time today. <laughs> People always say, I won't hold you long, I'm holding you. No, no, but. <laughs> but I wanna talk about something that's important because I saw on Facebook um, one day Someone asks a question, and it may be a new believer. It may be somebody that don't believe. It could be one who's thinking about turning their life over to Christ. But the question was asked, and I think it's probably for a new believer, but they asked the question, why do we need to confess our sins if they have already been forgiven? You need to think about that, especially you old Christians, us old Christians that's been in them a while. When people ask you a question, it may stumble a little bit sometimes because sometimes we may not know the answer. All we know is we have been saved. Our salvation is not questioned. We accepted Jesus Christ, but they may not have accepted Jesus Christ yet. So God led me to look into this particular question. He he led me to go to one of the disciples to explain this to me. You know, I'm talking like John was right here, and I gave him a call. But I did. I gave John a call because he is the most beloved, they called him, disciple. He is one that was with Jesus. Can you imagine being with Jesus? An eyewitness walked with him, and he talked with him, and he touched him. In 1 John, the first chapter and the ninth verse. First John, the first chapter and the ninth verse. I look to John 
because John has a, an, an assurance of salvation. John wants his readers to understand the whole ordeal about eternal life. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. We know John in the Gospels of John, but these three letters that was written is possibly circular letters, but he was writing these letters so that we may know and those believers may understand and have their faith in Jesus Christ. Who better to talk to than a eyewitness? Who better to uh, uh, confront or to con uh, confer with than an eyewitness? John in the ninth, I mean, uh, first John, sorry, in the first chapter, the ninth verse, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess, fess up, come on, come clean, tell it, Mother Carl. If we confess, he is faithful. If we confess, then he will forgive. I come today to talk a little bit about sin, confession, and forgiveness. I don't want to be too fancy in putting together a, 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 a theological a, a message from a theologian, but I come simply to tell you, especially for this new believer, trying to answer this question. Why do we need to confess if we say, as Christians, that God has already forgiven us? This is a reinstatement of verse 7. And verse 7, it also says, but if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I just want to use the title. You get clean by coming clean. You get clean by coming clean. You get clean because he said he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We get clean. We come clean by confessing. We ought not to deny our sins, but rather to confess them before God. Come on, somebody. Help me today. I'm, trying, I'm going to try to get out of here. I wish I could remember everything on this paper. I wish I didn't have to write this stuff down. But this is more of a lesson today, of a Bible study, because I want you to be able to answer these kind of questions when people and unbelievers uh, 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 come and ask you these questions, because John had to deal with new believers. And they were facing uh, agnostic narcissism. Those are people who rather say that knowledge was a way to salvation rather than the cross. So there's some people that's going to face you, and you got to know. To confess before God, you have to. And then this opened the doors for his forgiving and cleansing light to purify our hearts. Unrighteousness is just another way of saying sin. Jesus loved the imagery. I mean, John loved the imagery. 
of Jesus as the Word. The Word, the full communication of God to man. That was the incarnation. He draws on this image, which he also used in his gospel. At the beginning of his pastoral letter, he said, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Now, he's just not talking. I ain't telling you what I heard, John saying. I saw this happen. Jesus, the Word, whose life, death, and resurrection were witnessed by John and others, and this is what brings us joy and life. God is light, and if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with him. When we sin, Mother Crawford, God will forgive and cleanse us when we confess. This chapter offers a fully developed theology of sin. God is holy. Come on, somebody. All of us are sinners. If we say we do not sin, we are lies. And when we confess our sins, we are cleansed through the work that Jesus Christ already put in. If we confess, Jesus is a great initiator. And if we respond in humility, and if we come to him in faith and resist the pull of the world, see, this world is dangerous right now because Satan has taken over. Everything that we see in our eyes, we covet this world and we think that it's more important than God. We think it's more important than God's word. But if we respond in humility and faith and resist the pull of the world and abide in Christ, then we experience all the blessings of what being children of God means. You say that I'm a child of God. We hear people say that all the time. But what is sin? One definition has sin as an immoral act considering to be a transgression against the divine law. A sin is in the eyes of God. Stay with me now. One is confession. To confess means to agree or admit something. That's why when they take you in at the police station and they interrogate you, they want you to confess. Even if you didn't do it, you know, back in the day, they want to put it on you. And they say, I have his confession. You admitting something. When we sin, we should agree with God that the sin we are about to do or have done was wrong. To admit that sin is wrong is the very place we need to start in order to start thinking differently. When we admit it, we can start the process of thinking differently. Sin hurts others. Don't think that it don't. It is the very opposite of love. In 1 Peter 4 and 8 say, love casts out what? A multitude of sin. Confession, confession and admission is our sins. When we admit our sins, this is the very beginning place where we need to start when we want to renew our minds. We begin to grow in grace when we learn that everything is permissible. Not everything is beneficial. What is the role of confession? We got to come clean. If you want to get clean, you got to come clean. The role of confession, if, uh, the question is asked, if we are already forgiven, it seems unnecessary. 
The Greek word used for confession means to agree with. When we confess our sins to our Heavenly Father, we are agreeing with him. We are agreeing with his attitude about sins. That is, sin is against him. It is destructive to his purpose for our lives. And it carries with it consequences that will prove painful. Confession also implies that we are assuming responsibility for our actions. Come on now. We are uh, are not blaming our actions on others. We can't say, well, uh, that girl made me do it or that boy made me do it. We can't say that the devil made me do it. We are not putting the blame on someone else. Confession means that we see ourselves in relationship to our deeds of sin, just like God does. 1 John 1, 9, there's benefits to confession. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confession, confessing our sins is a necessary and godly practice that we, that, that, that helps us reorient ourselves and our life and bring us back to God. We got to admit it. We reorient ourselves to God and live in fellowship not just with God, but with other believers. First John 1, 9. The Apostle John uh, teaches the early church the importance of confession. He addresses his letter to the people who claim to have fellowship with God. Come on, like somebody we might know. Yet are living in sin. If we claim to have fellowship with him, we uh, 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 with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. If we claim to have fellowship with God and we're walking in a sinful way, the truth is not in us. We don't have the truth. Throughout his writings, the apostle John calls the church to walk in the light as God is in the light by aligning faith and Practice through confession and repentance. You remember that movie, Poltergeist. Go to the light. Come to the light. He is challenging the church to come to the light. John writes this letter of 1 John to help new believers, like I was talking about the new believers, new believers who experience the spiritual fellowship that comes when one's faith and actions are in harmony with God's will. Similar to Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthians, John teaches new believers how to repent when sin creeps up into the church, pointing the people back to the faith in Jesus, the Son of God, who purifies us from all sins. I come here today to point you in that direction. I know a lot of you that's in here today may be already saved, but it's somebody that you know that may not have made the train yet. That's somebody that you know that we uh, may be looking at this telecast they may not have understood yet. They may not have accepted Jesus Christ yet. Repeatedly, John reminds the church to forsake the world, people and to live in accordance with God's will. I didn't come here to scare nobody, but I did come here to warn somebody. I ain't trying to scare you. I can't scare you straight, but I come to warn you the consequences of your actions. There is hope in our confession. When we confess our sins, we break our allegiance with the world and its broken standards. We realign ourselves with Christ. We walk in the light as he is the light. John calls the church to confess 
its sins, knowing that forgiveness is available through Jesus' atoning sacrifice. Jesus reminds us that Satan intends our destruction. Satan is the ruler of this world right now. Jesus had to remind us, uh, but I, Jesus, intends our life. He said in John 10, 10, what did he say? The thief comes only to steal. We hear that verse all the time, to steal, kill, and destroy. We make it seem like it's one word or one sin. No, Jesus said the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And he said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. First John 1 and 9 offers the remedy to lost souls. Yes. Thank you, God, for pointing me to the apostle John. Why do we, the question, confess our sins if we have already been forgiven? You got to come clean right. to get clean. You better tell it. You better confess it. You better tell Jesus. The Catholics confess to the priest, but they letting it out. You got to let it out. You can't hold on to it if you want to get straight. You can't hold on. The Apostle Paul wrote, to the praise of his glory, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace, he lavishes on us with all wisdom, with all wisdom and with all understanding. That's Ephesians first chapter six through eight. This forgiveness is referring to what? Salvation. In which God has taken our sins and removed them from us as far as the east is from the west. This is what we call, I want you to write this down, this is what we call judicial forgiveness. This is the judicial forgiveness that God gives us upon receiving Jesus Christ as Savior. Judicial, all our past, present and future sins are forgiven on a judicial basis, meaning that we will not have to suffer eternal judgment for our sins. Now, now, now we still often suffer consequences of sin while we are here on the earth. We still have to suffer those consequences. But the judicial what that remind you of when you go in front of the judge. Now, on accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, accepting this free gift of salvation, now you don't have to suffer eternal damnation. That is judicial forgiveness. The difference between Ephesians 1, 6 and 8 and 1 John 1 and 9 is that John is dealing with what we call relational or familial forgiveness. Relational or familial forgiveness. That kind of forgiveness is, is like that of a father and a son. For example, if a son does something wrong to his father, uh, 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 if he does something wrong to his father, short of his expectations, his father's expectations are falling short of his father's rules. The son has hindered his fellowship with his father. All right. All right. He, he remains a son of his father, 
but the relationship suffered. You didn't do what I asked you to do. You didn't follow my rules. Our relationship now will suffer. I sometimes come in the house, won't even speak to you. Don't even want to talk to you. You have, you have hindered that relationship with the Father. Their fellowship will be hindered until what? The Son admits to his Father that he has done wrong. Yeah. It reminds you of the prodigal son. He hindered the relationship with his father. He went out on his own. But when everything came to a head, when he ran out of money and he ended up with the pigs, and the Bible says he came to himself. He came back down that road. And he had to fix that relationship he had with his father. Although his father had already forgiven him. Already forgiven him. That is his son. But he, the son, had to fix that relationship. He had to confess and say, Dad, I did wrong. I want to come back home. Amen. It works the same way with God. Amen. Our fellowship with him is hindered until we confess our sins. Yes. When we confess our sins to God, the fellowship with God is restored. This is relational forgiveness. Positional forgiveness, what we talked about, uh, uh, forgiveness or judicial forgiveness is that which is obtained by every Believer, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you could be saved. In our position as members of the body of Christ, we have been forgiven of every sin we have ever committed and every, or ever, we have been, put it this way, every sin that we've committed, Every sin that we are about to commit has been forgiven. The price paid by Christ on the cross has satisfied God's wrath against sin. And no further sacrifice or payment is necessary. When Jesus said, when he hung on the cross and he dropped his head and when he said it's finished, he meant that. The work is over. I've saved these people. The work is now complete. It is now finished here on this earth. So I have done my job. I came to do what I said I was going to do. I have established them in Christ. I have established them in the kingdom of God. Now they don't have to worry about eternal damnation. Whosoever believes in, in, in Jesus will not perish, but have everlasting life. We are positioned now. We are in our position. Christ on the cross said it is finished. He meant just that. Our positional forgiveness was obtained then and there. Confession of sin will help to keep us from the discipline of the Lord. If we fail to confess, the, the, the discipline of the Lord is sure to come until we confess it. As stated previously, our sins are forgiven at salvation. That's positional forgiveness. But our daily fellowship with God needs to stay in good standards. That's relational forgiveness. Proper fellowship with God cannot happen with unconfessed sins in our life. Therefore, we need to confess our sins to God as soon as we are aware that we have sinned in order to maintain our close relationship with God. 
we establish position. There is no use in trying to hide our sins. We cannot cover our own mistakes. He that hides, the Proverbs say, he that hides his sin shall not prosper. Right. Covering, by the way, is the meaning of atonement. Jesus covers our sins fully by his blood. We can never fully, fully right our wrongs. But we need God's grace. If it's not for grace, we need, we need God to invite us to confession, reminding us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. All our sins. And to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. It is that grace that saved me. It is that grace that bought my liberty. And when I memorize God's words, I hide God's truth in my heart. Can I get a witness? <laughs> and provide the Spirit of God ammunition with which to wage war against the temptations of my heart. Yes. When my heart begins to deceive me, lusting after things of the world, God's word moves into action, reminding me of God's standards and reminding me that I have an advocate. I have a lawyer in the courtroom. I have a representative. I have an advocate in the spirit of God working on my behalf, helping me to resist this temptation out here. The world is full of temptation. I don't know about you, but there was a time I was tempted and I yield to that temptation. But yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. I have a lawyer. I have a doctor. I have some help. I cooperate with the Spirit of God when I listen to God's Word. I submit to the spirits of, uh, of leading and resisting my sinful desires. When I fight against God's Spirit, when I indulge in the desires of my flesh, I am now accepting Satan in my life. When I have no power against him, God has all power in his hand. James described the temptation in this way. He said, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot tempt with evil. And he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Yeah. Then desire, when it is conceived, when you sleep with that desire, then you are conceived, gives birth to sin. Yeah. And sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. Yeah. It say, the Bible said, what? Through one man, sin entered into the world, yeah. and it is death by sin. Therefore, death pass upon all men for the wages of sin is what? It, but the gift of God is a, yes sir, I don't have any need now. I don't have any need now to wonder about my salvation. Because the Bible tells me the Bible tells me that Jesus loved me. For the Bible tells me so. I am not questioning now my salvation. And I'm not worried that anyone else will question my salvation. I know where I am. These things are written that ye may know 
that you have eternal life. You have eternal life. I don't have to wait to get to heaven to find out if I'm saved. I know because the Bible tells me so. The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth, come on, somebody, you know that one, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved because with the mouth one confesses unto salvation, and with the heart one confesses unto righteousness, and whosoever believed upon him shall not be ashamed. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? I heard them say a long time ago that it was a man born in a manger. <laughs> he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. I don't know about you, but I know the story. I was not an eyewitness. I'm believing in things that's unseen. But I have faith because he was born of a virgin. And he came down 42 generations. I know who he is. And now he was already telling his mama, I got to be here about my father's business. Do you know him? Ain't he's all right? At 33, he had to go up that hill to Golgotha. I remember the story. Do you know the story? He went up that mountain with that cross on his back. For me and you, just then they hung him high. They spread him wide and they nailed the nails in his hand and they nailed the spikes in his feet. Can you see him? And he suffered and he cried out, it's over, I've done my job. They buried him, and then, what, three days later, <laughs> when they took him down and they buried him in a borrowed tomb, three days later, I don't know if you remember the story, I have to tell the story every time, three days later, <laughs> three days later, he laid there all day on Friday, he laid there on Friday night, all day on Saturday and all night on Saturday in the night. But early, yeah. do you know the story? You already know the story. Early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up, he got up. I remember the story and I keep it close to my heart. He got up with all In his hand. Do you know him? Hey, he's all right. Confess with your mouth. You get clean by coming clean. Tell it, Mother Crawford. Tell it. <laughs> you better tell the truth if you want to be saved. You need to help some new Christians when they ask that question why? Should we confess our sins if we say that Jesus died for us and we're already forgiven? Well, there's some more work you have to do after you do that. They got to know that Jesus died for us. But God called us and to establish ourselves in the kingdom of heaven, we got to understand there's work to do. You can't just say I'm saved and then go do anything you want to do. You have to separate yourself from this world. There's so many things happening. We see people getting abducted. We, there's so many things going on in this world. That's because the devil is busy. He is in control and God has allowed him to be controlled. So you have to make a decision and confess with your mouth. You have to know that the world has nothing good for you. There's some things, of course, we'll living in this world and we have to do 
We understand because we're human, but we're a child of God. When we are Christians, we have to separate ourselves. We're in this world, but we're not of it. This don't apply to us. All of these things we see on television, all this social media stuff does not apply to us. We are soldiers in the army. We are more than conquerors. We can't stand there and be rubbing elbows because the road is wide to destruction. There's a lot that's on it. But it's narrow. Do you want to be in that number? I'm in that number. That narrow road. I'm in that number. You have to be sure. Do you want to be in that number? Because it's as narrow and straight as the road. You got to understand, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the fleshly desires fool you. Don't let money and all these different things fool you. It's a trick. I didn't come to scare nobody, but I did come to warn you. It's a trick. I'm telling you it's a trick. I know. I've indulged in those things, so I went through the fire so I could come out. It's just like you've been in prison. I've been in prison so I can come out and tell you what prison is like. Right. Not literally prison, but you know, the prison in my mind. I want y'all to get that mixed up. <laughs> no, I ain't been in that prison. But a prisoner of my own mind and in my own body and caught up in this world is stuff and it nearly broke me. I had an attack earlier this week uh, trying to uh, 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 trying to attack my mental state. But I had to listen to some praise music. When things are getting, uh, when you're being tempted, you gotta go somewhere and praise. Go find a place to worship. Find some praise that'll help you. You better listen to some music. You better listen to some preachers. You better listen to some word of God. But the best thing you can do is get into the word yourself. See, when you read the word of God, it stays with you. You put it in your heart, and now you have something to fight with. You have to stand up to the devil. Stand up to him that is evil. A lot of these things in the world is of the devil. You can't walk in darkness. Go to the light. God is in the light. The doors of the church is open. And if there's anyone, if there be anyone who want to renew themselves and make that confession, if anyone who has any questions about your salvation, you need to come today. You need to call us today if you're listening you know, about Facebook or whatever. Give us a call at New Jerusalem. Give us a call here at Mount Pleasant and we can help you. We can help you understand what salvation is. We can steer you to the right direction. First thing you have to do is turn away from those things that's bringing you down. Bringing you, down. you know what it is. I don't know what it is. There's something holding you back. And all you have to do is come to us. Come to us. The door of the church is open and we are opened. And you can tell us anything. But you go to God first and confess with your mouth. If you want to be saved, if you want to get clean, you got to come clean. Don't worry about tomorrow. Come today and get saved. Amen? Amen? Thank you, and God bless you. Uh, if that be all, anything else, I'd like for uh, New Jerusalem to stand for me. Amen. Amen. We ain't got a lot of folks, <clears throat> but we're strong in the spirit now. Yeah. Like anybody, Deacon, you want to say anything? All right. Now, at our church, what we do every 
every Sunday before we leave, we have Mother Lavender to say something. She give us a word of wisdom. Well, I, I go around because they ain't like this. I got a whole lot of folks. If you want to say something, uh, 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 Minister Leslie, you say say anything. <laughs> I say, uh, uh, sister, the other sister laughing, does you want to say anything? You know, Deacon going to say the same thing. <laughs> but Mother Lavender, she always give us the last word. And I know we do that at our church, but this is my church too. So I got two churches, and I'm, I'm lucky, huh? I'm looking, to look, I'm looking forward to working with you a little bit more than normally. I, I have been going around a little bit and People have been looking at me, but that's, I'm not worried about none of that. I'm at New Jerusalem, and I'm at Mount Pleasant. Mother, do you got anything you want to tell the folks today? You know how you do on our Sunday. That's all? That's it? I was waiting now. Well, we, we, we really thank you for coming, uh, and we thank everyone for listening to us today. But I wanted to kind of do an uh, uh, altar call. Uh, Minister Leslie, could you come up here for real, real quick? Did you want to say? Yes, yes. It could have been any other way. It could have been me. It could have been anybody in the church. Yes, sir. But I just, I just want to give God the praise for bringing the baby back home. Yes, ma'am. And that's why we want to pray today before y'all leave against these evil forces that's out here. And we want to protect our own. And we want God's grace to be continue to be with us, but we want to pray a hedge of protection around us and our families. So if you can come to the altar if you want, or you can stand where you are, and, and, and we're going to dismiss you, dismiss you right after that. But I just feel the need that we need to pray for our people. As pastors and preachers and stuff, we have to get up here and start praying for our people and leading the people against this evil forces that's out here. Amen. Amen. Come on, uh, let's. Father, we love you. We honor you, God, because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we rest in your, in your bosom knowing that you take control over all things. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would cover your people this day. That this is, a day, this is the day that the Lord has made, God. And because we rejoice in you, God, you, can, you take care of us. You said wherever the praises are, your presence is. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless every person under the sound of my voice. That whatever their heart is in need of, God, that you would see to it that they would receive it. 
I pray for health and strength of the, the members and all those who stand in need of health and strength today, God. I pray for a mind regulation over minds that are bothered. I pray for the hearts who are bereaved on today, that, there, that joy does come in the morning. I pray for those who are in need of financial restoration and that you would teach all of us how to be good stewards for you first of all and that we would take care of our families as you say we should. I pray for all of our children, God, that they would have a spirit of discernment in the streets, God, and that they would not go into the streets without knowledge and wisdom and that they would uh, turn to you for that and their families. I pray for their divine covering, God, that where no hurt, harm would come to any of them, especially as they enter into the new school year. I pray for our seniors, Lord, that you would give them health and strength and that you would build their hearts and minds up, that they would be the leaders that would carry wisdom unto all of us that needed God. I pray for the men of God, that they would stand strong in the presence of their families and in our communities, God, that every man would have a, 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 a person that they would talk and speak into God, that you would give them divine um, uh, protection and provision over all that they have control over. Father, I just bless, bless the, uh, the preacher of the hour, God, that you've given him the opportunity to break the bread of life. B bless the servant over this household of faith that you would give him traveling mercies. And bless everyone, God. Allow us to have an experience with you. That although we heard your word today, allow us to go out into the world and be doers of your word. Send us someone in our lives that we can tell someone about confessing our sin to, to an almighty God who is faithful and just to forgive us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Anybody love the Lord today? I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Leslie. And uh, we're looking forward to fellowshipping with you guys, and we hope that we can come down here and combine services one day and come down here and, and help New Jerusalem out with some things that we are trying to work on, and we hope that you have some input in, in some of those things, but we, we hope to be able to, to allow us to be able to fellowship one to another, one church, we're one church, we're one district, uh, 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 same district and all that. And so we hope that we'll be able to, to combine services one day and, and just have a great time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, with the grace of our Lord, the Savior of Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forever. And they all said, Amen. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell somebody you love them. <laughs>